Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.9 and Aergis Simulations Mirage F1 EE module. Welcome to tutorial 6, Infrared Air-to-Air -air Missiles. Today we're going to cover the usage of the Matra R550 Magic 1 infrared missiles, uh, but uh, this procedure also applies to the infrared version of the R-530s and the Sidewinder missiles, both of which can also be carried in the Mirage F-1. Let's uh, jump into the cockpit and let's take a quick look at the controls that we're going to need to use in order to employ these weapons. I'm also going to demonstrate how to use them both with and without a radar lock, uh, because of course they're infrared, they don't necessarily actually need a radar lock in order to operate. Um, the radar lock that I'll demonstrate will be the kind of fast acquisition combat mode, which we haven't seen as yet. You can, of course, also just use normal high altitude mode and manually lock a target, but we've already covered that in a previous video. So, in the first instance, let's go ahead and take a little look at uh, some of the controls that we're going to have to play around with. Uh, we've got some switches on the side wall of the cockpit here that we're going to want to make use of. You've got this EFF switch, which is the Cannon and Magic uh, or Sidewinder designation switch cancel. You flip that down to return to normal mode. I'll show you the CNM switch in just a moment. We then also have this switch here, which switches you into telemeter uh, or zone scanning. It's a three position switch. In the middle mode, you can use the radar normally, but if you push it into the upwards position or the downwards position, you effectively put your radar into a close combat auto acquisition override. And again, I'll be demonstrating that in just a moment. Also on the throttle, although you probably can't see it right now, there is something called the C and M switch. I recommend that you uh, bind this. When you hit your C and M switch, which I'll do now, you immediately select your uh, matras or sidewinders on the um, the outer pylons, and you also select the cannon. If I uh, if I go ahead and center up the cannon just now, uh, actually we can't see anything as yet because we don't have master arm on. Let's open the sec armes uh, switch cover and move it to the middle position. And now we're going to hit that C and M switch again. There we go. And what will happen is we get a green light on the right hand side of the site. This confirms to us that we are in C and M mode. This is also a weapon selection override, so be aware that the normal selections on your armament panel on the right hand side here are no longer respected. Uh, you will immediately have whatever short range infrared missiles you have, and you can also see we have the gun pipper at the same time. As you can see here, I've got two triangles. So I've got one infrared missile on the left and one on the right. The triangles indicate that both are ready for use at this time. Um, if I was now to hit the uh, the EFF switch that I just showed you on the side wall, it would cancel this mode. I'll do it now. Uh, the green light goes out, the weapons uh, symbology disappears from the, the sight glass, and the armament panel selections would now be respected again. If I wanted to manually select an infrared missile, I use the EXT switches, uh, and you've got gauche and droite for left and right. Let's say I wanted the left one. I can push in that button, and we've now manually selected the left missile. If I was to choose this one, I can manually select the right one. You can only have one of these selected at a time. I'm going to deselect that again. Uh, going over the other switches here, the only ones that really apply are, we of course have single and salvo launch possibilities. I'm going to leave it in single. And then we have the missile prep switch. This needs to be in the up position. For the sidewinder and for the, the magic missiles, the prep time is about 20 seconds. So be aware of that. So uh, for our engagement, uh, I'm initially just going to go at it without any kind of radar lock. Let's bring ourselves out of active pause. Uh, I have a target actually to my front. Uh, so let's uh, accelerate and let's hit C and M switch. And we now have weapons ready the last thing for us to do, just as before, is we need to flip up the, uh, the safety on the trigger. Uh, right shift and space bar as per default allows us to do that, although you, you may actually want to uh, map that to something. So at this stage we're ready to go. Uh, if we were to press 
Uh, actually, let me go into the adjust controls because this is a very silly named button. If we were to pre press the bombs, rockets, missiles and sight recorder button, we would now launch a missile. Uh, also note that the, uh, the field of view for the infrared missiles is aimed right at the very top of the sight glass. So you're not centering your target, you're putting it at the top of the sight. You just make sure, nope, he's off to the right. I'm going to have to try and visually acquire this target, which might be a little bit difficult for me. There he is. I've got him. So, we're going to move in. These are, of course, very short-range weapons. We're going to wait until we get a tone. Once we have a tone, we'll also have green circles underneath the weapon triangles, indicating which ones have a, have a track. Generally, both will see the target at the same time. There we go. There we go. Oops, let's just pause there. You heard that kind of low growling sound, and you can now see that we have two circles appearing underneath our triangles. Now, uh, note that because I'm in CNM override, as indicated by this green light, the system will automatically fire the left missile first. It'll always fire left. And then if we were to engage again, it would fire the right. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna pull the, pull the trigger. Missiles away, that was a bit close, but we still got the hit. Okay, so successful. I can now hit the cancel button, and the system is now back to normal. Excellent. So uh, now we're going to think about the auto acquisition modes. So let's just start bringing the aircraft around. Um, that switch that I showed you on the left wall it has an up position, which is for the TEL mode. This mode is effectively a... Um, what would you call it exactly? It's like a HUD scan, really. It's a five degrees by five degrees scan out to seven nautical miles. The downwards position of that switch is BPZ, and that's a 20 by 20 degree scan, also out to seven nautical miles. Uh, the TEL position is not slewable, but the, the BPZ position can be slewed using the slewing switch. Let's see where our target is now. Oh, actually, he's completely behind us. Let's come all the way around. So initially, I'm going to push my switch into the downward position for BPZ. You'll see that on the on the radar scope, that's indicated by B.Z. And you can see that we have what looks like a normal lock-on scan minus any actual target. Now, if I push and hold slew left, it will actually scan to the left. If I push and hold scan to the right, it'll scan to the right. Whenever I let go of my slew command, it jumps back into the center. Uh, let's see if I can find my target. He's all the way around here. Okay, he should be kind of out here somewhere. Nice, and in preparation, I'm going to hit the CNM switch now. So you can see we've got one missile ready to go. And let's see if we can lock this chappy using the BPZ mode. And again, if I want to come out of this mode and use the radar normally again, I simply put that switch on the left-hand console back into the middle position, and that will return you to whatever your previous mode was. Anyway, back to BPZ. We actually, yeah, we're flying directly towards him. He should be here somewhere. Let's see if we can pick him up. Actually having a hard time. Oh, I can see him. Oh, no, actually, no, it's a ground feature. Thought I could see him. Yeah, we're not getting him. He should be around here, but we've just flown right past him. Let's come around and see what we can see. Do not have eyes on him at all. Oh, he's off to our right. Okay, fine. Oh, we have a lock. Okay, so let me just bring it around. Uh, oh, actually, I lost him. We can use the intercept cue in order to pick him up. There we go. Right, let's pause here. As always, we have a yellow square over the currently locked target, and then the we're now in a single target track. Uh, we have his... Uh, his indicator here, showing that he must be at, hmm, let's, 
about two nautical miles, I think. So now let's come out of pause and we want to try and position him really high in the sight glass, because keep in mind that's where the field of view of the missile is. We have tone. Missiles away. Boom. That's a kill. Okay, so cancel the CNM switch, move the TEL BPZ switch back into the middle, and we're now back in our normal scan. And that's working nicely. We could then safe the trigger, just like that, and put master arm off and recover it. And that is the engagement over. That's how we can make use of infrared missiles, both without radar and with radar lock using the close combat modes. I hope you all enjoyed that. I'll see you all next time.